demonstrate how to paint a bouquet of sunflowers. That'll be kind of fun as we're wrapping up summer and they're in full bloom. But uh, I just thought, you know what, let's just celebrate sunflowers today. So that's what I am going to show you how to do. Okay, so I want to start this off with, I'm just doing a thin application of, today I'm using alizarin crimson and ultramarine glue and there's a little bit of burnt sienna coming through there. And this is just a thin layer and I'm putting it on a little darker than I need it because I'm going to wipe it off. And uh, it just stains the canvas a nice middle tone color and I'm, I'm choosing to use alizarin crimson today and ultramarine blue because it creates a really nice violet color because what I'm painting today, as you can see, are my pretty sunflowers. And so I thought, sometimes I like to let the background peek through in um, my paintings. And so if I have a purple background and I let it peek through during passages where I have um, shadow on the flowers, well, when I paint anything, um, that I generally use its complementary color for the shadows. So, being that they're yellow, purple, of course, is yellow's complement. And so I'm going to go with um, <laughs> the yellow's complement, which is the purple. So I'm going to give it a little bit of texture. And you can see I kind of altered it, and it's a little lighter up here, a little darker, and um, places a little redder. I don't know if all of that comes through, but there you go. Okay, so that one's spent. What I'm going to do is figure out size and placement on here first and see what sort of makes sense. So cleaning my palette off a little bit. For colors today, I'm using, I'll show you my palette here, I have titanium white. Cad Yellow Medium, Cadmium Red Medium, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna. I threw on some Cobalt Violet today for a little bit of fun. Um, again, using the complementary color in the shadows of the petals. I may or may not use it. Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Green, and Alizarin Crimson. And then I have my linseed oil right there. So for now, I'm holding my palette down low. You won't be able to see much of what's going on, but that's okay, you're not gonna really miss anything. I'm just using the Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue. Right now, a little bit of Gamsol over here off to the side, I've got my little bucket. Just on a hook off my easel. All right, so I'm making an inky mixture and I'm making some big decisions. Where are these flowers gonna live? On here, so I think if I fit them within this spectrum kind of within here and then I've got my glass dish that they're sitting in no I think I want those smaller if my the glass comes down to here I've got this thing like this you just kind of work these issues out in your mind if you have to verbalize them that's fine too I'm thinking this glass bowl comes about like that. There's a sphere and then down or out like this. So I'll get to painting this glass here later, but in a, in doing a still life, you really want to concentrate on what on what is most temporal as you begin your process here. And I'm thinking about how um, temporal these flowers are and they are obviously gonna to start to fade quickly, so I wanna get them in place. And I, I definitely was excited to paint sunflowers because um, you know, summer's drawing to a close, it's September, early September, and sunflowers are at their peak glory, and it just seemed appropriate. So I just really wanted to celebrate them, and I was setting up the still life I thought oh I've got these props I've got little mini pumpkins I've got you know all kinds of things that were pretty but then as I started making this arrangement nothing was really as pretty as these sunflowers so I thought you know if if that's what I want to paint then I need to paint those like there's no tomorrow and just really make those be celebrated in this 
And so that's what I am doing here. I'm just celebrating these sunflowers. And I thought, well, let's see, do I want a white light background, sunny and, and white? Or do I want this, you know, dramatic background that really offsets the flowers and makes them kind of the star show? And of course, that's what I went with because I always like that effect. I think it's really interesting. So I'm assuming then if my flowers fit within this sphere, that that is going to work. So like anything else, it's kind of like doing multiple little portraits here. And I am just sort of calculating where they're all going to fit comfortably on this canvas. And I like how they're arranged like this one's down lower, like this. And then the one front and center is kind of bigger, right in this area. This one is scrunched behind the front and center one, and it's a little bit higher, though. It's the highest flower here. This one is angling away from us, and it's down lower. Like that. And then this one is facing off in the background and it's really actually quite a bit darker. So then we have the glass bowl coming around like this and I put some marbles in the bottom of my glass. I don't know if you can see them in the video but they are there simply to help hold the stems of the flowers because they were going to fall out otherwise. All right so that's in place so I'm going to go in now with a bigger brush and start painting in the background. So I'm just going to take some ultramarine blue and I think I'm going to use a dark violet for the background. Lizard and Crimson and Ultramarine Blue. So far, it's really not necessary that you see what I'm doing because it's just dark. Ultramarine Blue, a Lizard and Crimson. So coming up here, maybe I'll add a little bit of Burnt Sienna just to make it a little richer. And I like to establish my boundaries right away and figure out the extremities here. So if my flowers go up to that height, then my background is going to, um, I like to establish that according to where it is in relation to the border. It gives me a sense of place on the, on the canvas. Like that. So coming around to the front. And this is all very, very dark over here. So we're just gonna paint that into darkness back here. So you won't hear me talk for a little bit. I'm gonna just kind of fast forward this part as I paint in all this boring dark. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just going to take, just to get rid of some of these um, distracting brush strokes, this is all just going to be flat black. I'm just taking a big two inch brush and just kind of getting rid of some of those. I'll probably come back through and add a little bit of variety and texture to the brush strokes, but for now, that's just where I'm going with that. So I'm bringing this down a little bit because this is going to be kind of a middle tone range down here. Just really simple like that. We'll add more paint to that later. All right, now taking on a little bit smaller brush, I'm going to go in and map out where my brown circles are in the flowers. 
So again, just using this dark um, burnt sienna ultramarine blue. Very dark color. I'm squinting down and I'm looking at the shape of the center here. I want to get the direction. If their eyes, it's kind of like establishing the direction that the eyes are looking in. That's kind of what I'm thinking about here with those. This one back here. Now, of course, the angle and perspective that you're looking at these flowers compared to what I'm seeing is going to be different. And then this one up here. Okay. Now, when I squint way down at the flowers, I notice that there are just um, really about three different shades of yellow for these flowers. So to simplify my world, I'm going to start out with just a, the darkest yellow that I see up there. And I'm going to use that as a scumbled glaze, sort of, if you will, over the whole thing. So I'm taking yellow ochre. I'm still going to take some cad yellow. But then to darken it, I'll do... Um, I'll mix up my violet over here, some lizard crimson and ultramarine blue. This is my purple pile. And I'll take into that and mix it with my yellow ochre. Looking at my flowers, I, that to me is about the color that I'm seeing in the shadows of the flowers. So let's start with that as a base. And right now I'm not really concerned about petals. I'm just going to be quiet for a while and squint way down and start mapping out the actual shapes that I see these shadows in. And I can come back through with the background and cut into these flowers for the petals. I'm not concerning myself with the green yet either. Moving along. Squinting just makes this process so much easier. Don't forget to squint when you're painting. It is just a handyman's secret weapon. I'm going to get this one back here first. It's darker. It just kind of blends right into this one. Making up a green here, I'm going to take some ultramarine blue right into that dark mixture. And I have quite a bit of yellow already on my brush, so I'm going to just right into that, kind of made a nice dark shadowy green, so I'm going to paint this into place where I see the green part of the sunflower holding it up. And same thing with back there. And then I'm not really worried yet about these little things over here. 
Okay, so while I have the background in my cognizance here, I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and just make that really dark. A little bit of yellow, or excuse me, linseed oil. Now I'm going to go around and just sort of clean up what I'd started here. So I have my fan going because it is so hot and it also helps with fumes. If you have your fan in your studio, you can blow you know, all of your fumes away and help with the airflow that way. All right, so the day had shifted the light coming through my window, so I had to adjust the lighting in my studio. And so now I'm seeing um, a little bit different lighting effects on my painting. So I'm just gonna go through and make those quick adjustments where I see that it needs some. So I'm working on just sort of tightening up some of the background in here, just a little where it was looking kind of scratchy. There is a glare up in this corner. That is just as dark as everywhere else. I don't know why it's lighter up there, but it must just be the way that the new light is hitting it. So. All right, so just cleaning it up and bringing this over. I'll be adding some more interest and variation to this background, but for now, as you can see, I'm just taking it in pieces as it seems appropriate. All right. So now I'm going to add some more work onto the vase down here. While I have this dark mixture on my palette, just the dark um, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, I'm going to come in through here and just map out, as I squint down at that vase, it has this glass marble ball base down here. And then this is almost invisible as it's pretty camouflaged with the tabletop surface. Again, thinking in terms of mass, I want to just um, squint down and see it as a whole. Makes it a lot easier to sort of draw it out. Now I'm going to take a little bit of white right into that mixture a little bit, kind of so that I end up with a gray, a little bit of a gray, and that's going to help me get some of these glass shades in here. Just to help draw a little bit of separation here as I see it. And the water line. Okay, so I can come back in through there and just accent with a few highlights. Maybe I'll just do that real quick with this. A soft, round highlight. Let's smudgy that a little. And then a strong right on top. And then I'll do that um, to the glass face up here, but I'm not really there yet. Okay, so I guess while I have this, I'm just going to get some of this tabletop. And that's just sort of a gray-brown taupe. 
I want to add a little bit more warmth to it as it's up closer to us over here. And I'm not going to use this brush anymore. And something a little stiffer. getting better. So I like how the surface of the table just sort of has this emerging into the light treatment down here. Just kind of feels interesting that way. So we're going to go with that. Just like it's sitting in a spotlight. And no, I'm, I'm not done with the flowers. <laughs> taking my time with this background. Really want it to read appropriately. Wherever I can lose an edge, I'm going to. If I can just lose the side of that base altogether and then maybe just suggest a little bit there, that's all that's needed. Same thing with the circle down here. Let's just bring that right into the shadows. So we are starting our um, still life section in our Renaissance Academy. And so that's why you're getting these still lifes, because <laughs> I'm in still life mode. And so um, I just love doing still lifes, I really do. And I just find they're so tranquil and the whole studio just takes on this peaceful, quiet feeling to it. And. Um, you know, when it gets above 90 outside, even mid to upper 80s, that is just too hot. It's so hot to plein air paint. And so I am very delightful and happy to be inside working on quiet still lifes. All right, so that's fine. Um, again, I have this background going off there. I'll just take a little bit of this over here to pull that side of the sphere out a little more. So I'm just playing with some of this glass features in here. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna gives me a nice dark. I'm going to pull this shadow, this darker shadow, down a little bit closer to this because I do see it back here as being more of casting a shadow behind this little vase. So we're going to show a little bit of definition to this shadow by accentuating some of the lighter air around it. By that, I'm just gonna, I'm wiping my brush off and I'm getting a little bit of the yellow ochre, burnt sienna. Let's just pull in some white here. And some of that blue, that'll be fine. So I'm looking at this, seeing where I see some lighter colors. Let's just pull in a little bit to show that there's a shadow back here behind this. There's some atmosphere. As it wraps itself around the vase. Like that. And then 
I think we'll just put a little bit more of this lit background over here because I really want it to look like the light is coming in through here and hitting this background over here. Let's warm that up a little bit. Okay, so I am actually want that to be a little darker over here because I really want that a flat, dark, non-obtrusive, very quiet background. So I'm going to paint that a very strong um, dark. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. Just let that go in the background. Okay. okay, so I just want to hit that table surface up just with a little bit more intensity right down here. There, that, I think that gives it a stronger sense of sitting in a spotlight that's nice and warm and right there. Add some warmth to that. So I can come back through here now and just clean that. Some areas you want it sharp and articulate and other areas it's okay to let it just disappear. Okay, so that glass is pretty much where I'm happy with it. I'm going to work on the second value of the sunflowers. Now I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush. This is a size 2. I'm going to mix up my lighter yellow color. So I'm going to grab my cad yellow medium again. And it's kind of mixing with some of that yellow ochre that was on the palette here. This is obviously not my most intense yellow, so that is, you're kind of looking at it, you're getting a strong glare from the light. Okay, now, with this mixture, I'm just squinting down at these flowers and I am deciding where these middle tone colors are going to go. Now I'm kind of focusing again a little bit more on 
the shapes of the petals. And this one back here was pretty much mostly in shadow when I began. Of course, I had to readjust my lighting, so now <laughs> it's all a little bit different. But I'm going to have to be selective anyway because I don't want every petal painted with, you know, brilliant bright yellow. That would look, it wouldn't read properly. So I'm just picking out some and letting them, um, I lift off my brush as it goes back in towards the center. Now while I'm focused on really um, dark yellow flowers, the ones that are mostly in shadows, I'm going to come back here and get this one too. And I want these, actually, I want this darker back here. So I added a little bit of green to this. And I'm really just articulating a few more of these petals. I will get to the green things in a minute. So now I'm going to take, I dried, I wiped my brush off and I'm going to lose some of these, just flip them back. And then I'm just kind of giving them a little bit of body there. But having these lost back here to the background is so crucial because that back there will really make these just pop. I'm going to get the background ones on this flower here before I get the lit petals on this one because they are there are some that are really lit and very sunny. All right. I'm going to get some of them. This is just a brighter, almost pure cad yellow, but I kind of want to drag the brush stroke out this way so I can let it into the background this way. Now I am going to take a little bit more of that darker yellow that I mixed up with some of that greenish darker color and I'm going to paint over the top of some of those highlights there. Just so that they look like they're on the other side of these shadowed petals. Okay, now I'm going to take some of that same shadow color that I have on my palette and just articulate some more of these petals as I see them. Got some nice strong shapes in here. Letting some of that darker color peek through too because that's important. Before I do a lot of detail in this passage, I want to get some of this green in here a little bit more in place, but I have this on my brush, so let's just use it. Okay, wiping my brush off, I'm going to take some Cad Yellow and Ultramarine Blue, just a nice green like that. If I want it a little bit darker, I can add more blue. 
Yep, I do. <laughs> Darker, maybe some um, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is really in the red family, so when you add it to green, it, it does a nice job darkening. So I'm gonna take it and pull it as I lift into the other petal, into the yellow. Press, twirl, and lift. That gives you that almost like a teardrop. You can do it opposite too. Gently press, press down more, and turn and go flat like that. So I want some darker areas down here where the light is not getting it at all. Okay, and um, let's add a little bit of white to this green, because I want some of that chalky color green that's on the petal, on the green parts. Just where it, the light might be getting some of it. Down below. And I think I'll put some of it over here too. Press, lift, and twirl. It's too high. Over here. A little bit darker. I want these darker over here. see any green down below. Okay, so that works for that. All right, back to this one. We want to, oh, you know what? I'm seeing a little bit of uh, bounce light on the bottom side of this one as it comes out of the vase from this flower hitting that. It's bouncing off that bright yellow onto the back of that flower. So let's kind of darken that so it's obvious that that's what that is. All right. Okay, back on track. This one. I feel that the darker petals there are just fine. So I'm gonna go right into my cad yellow. And on this side, I'm gonna pull out some of these brighter press, lift, and turn. You see, there's no race. It's just a matter of being very slow and methodical. Press and lift. Just sculpting out, squinting down at these flowers, seeing where I see some of these bright yellows. And sometimes they're just an abstract shape that don't really make very much sense, but just squint down and you know, paint it that way and it just sort of seems to make sense. Press, twirl, and lift. Press and lift. I just want some of these to get that external treatment. I like them as they come down into here, they kind of look a little bit transparent down here, so I was hoping to get some of that. 
there. A lot of people love sunflowers so much. This would be a great painting to do for someone who just loves them. Or if you don't really want to do the painting, this one will be available for purchase on my website, jessicahenryfineart.com. Uh, so you can always shoot me an email if you're interested in a painting you see that I'm making on YouTube here. And as you know, you may know, last week I was live and I was, it was a celebration episode where if you comment, even just your name, on the video, you will be entered in to win the painting, that demo painting. So on, on September 14th, 2018, I will be doing a drawing live on YouTube, drawing one winner. And I will call out your name, and message you, asking for your information to mail you the painting. So that's pretty cool. Um, and just really appreciate we are celebrating 10,000 subscribers, and I'm just so grateful. That's so many, so many people really appreciate that um, you guys are all have joined me, and so many of you have expressed such incredible letters and, and things that you're saying, what it's meant to you. Even just, just being an artist, getting out there and painting, and I'm just so honored to be a part of your journey too, as you are all part of mine. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so now I'm going to take just pure yellow and white, a little more yellow than white, and I want to come back through here and just really hit up the bright spots. And where are those? And you can you can lay the paint on pretty thick if you do a substantial scoopage. See, by making these some of these really bright, all of the other ones suddenly are pushed way back into shadow, and it really keeps the eye and the focus right here in the center. Let's get a little bit more impact color, yellow and white. I just want some of these to swing a little brighter over here. I'm thinking about how this flows in like this. So I really want some of these to have that, that leading the eye in this way. So now I'm just sort of playing with the petals and making them work for me.
like how these are coming up and really getting the light on the inside of that flower. I think I'm going to make some of these just have a little bit of kapow back here. Okay, now I want to go ahead and work on the inside of the sunflowers. I'm just going to take some burnt sienna, some yellow ochre, and I've already got a nice dark brown in there, so I'm just going to take some of that, almost an amber color, and just soften around the inside of those dark spots, using the brown that's already there to help sort of blend that situation in a little bit, wiping my brush off. Going around, and I can even take and flick it back that way every now and then. Okay, and then some of that again back up in here. Now what I'm going to do is clean my brush off really well and I'm going to play with some of this cobalt a little bit. Just taking that pure piece of cobalt and I just want to put it in a few places to allow some, some nice spots for a bright little passage of purple. It just gives the whole painting a little bit of electric fun. in here. And that doesn't really look like purple, so let's get some nice pure paint. And through there. Okay, that's probably all that needs. Okay, now I just need to go back through the vase and, and some of this background here and double check that everything is reading correctly. So I think that some of this vase needs a little bit of uh, some articulate passages, ignoring the marbles inside there. I'm also thinking about some of these petals where I want some of them to be lost and some to be find, found. So that's what I'm doing now and I keep up my paper towel in my hand at all times and I wipe it off as I go around. Otherwise you can get too much on your brush and as you try to soften some of these edges, it, it's just going to get away from you and be quite a headache. I'm going to actually take, I've got, this is a soft, softer brush, so I'm going to just use this one, just to help go through here, and I don't want to go too crazy because I really do want some articulate petals in there, but some of them really just need to go back into shadow.
So just using the corner of my brush and making them look like they're glowing by bringing some of that glow into the dark surrounding areas to really just make it look like they're like glow in the dark. Just to soften up the bottom here a little bit more. Well, that wraps us up. Thank you so much for joining me. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the little bell button so you're notified whenever I put a new video up. All right, you guys, thanks so much. Bye-bye.